It's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, and in last week's episode, I answered another question from one of my clients, and the question last week was part 12 of My Sister is in Intensive Care on a Balloon Pump and Ventilated After Cardiac Surgery. The ICU doctors want to stop treatment against our wishes and let her die. What should we do? You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer a question we get quite frequently from our readers here at intensivecarehotline.com. And the question this week is when to give TPN or total parenteral nutrition in intensive care. Now, first off, let's clarify what TPN is and what it stands for. TPN stands for Total Parenteral Nutrition and is in essence IV or intravenous nutrition in infusion form. Now, if your loved one is in intensive care and is ventilated and sedated in an induced coma, you may have already asked yourself how feeding or nutrition is taken care of. The short answer to this question is that most of the time, your critically ill loved one will have a nasogastric feeding tube or also known as NG tube in their nose and will get fed through that. Or if your loved one isn't on a ventilator and is awake in intensive care, they may either eat orally get nutrition via the nasogastric tube or NG tube, i.e. if they can't swallow. This is also known as enteral feeds. Or they may get IV or intravenous TPN if they can't eat orally or if they can't tolerate nasogastric tube or PEG tube feeding. The preferred method of nutritional management in intensive care or critical care is always to let a patient eat orally or to have nasogastric feeds. It's easy, it's effective, and the stomach gets some nutrition and is maintaining a healthy gut flora if the feeds are getting absorbed appropriately. In some circumstances in intensive care, your critically ill loved one will not be able to either tolerate or digest the nasogastric feeds via the nasogastric tube or will be unable to take food orally. Those are the situations when TPN is required. Indications for TPN are malnourishment, loss of gastrointestinal function, i.e. the gastrointestinal tract cannot be accessed, is not functional because it is either obstruct, inflamed, fistulated or leaking, and your loved one cannot achieve adequate nutrition by oral or enteral means. Less commonly, where there is irreversible loss of alimentary function, i i.e. short gut syndrome, TPN can be life-saving and may be considered long-term, including the delivery of home TPN. Now, other indications are perioperative nutritional support, i.e. 7 to 10 days before surgery to improve post-surgery outcomes and recovery. Also, patients with high risk of post-operative bowel obstruction, also known as ileus, pancreatitis and pancreatic fistula, and also in palliative care situations in order to maintain quality of life or quality of end of life. TPN, also known again as total parenteral nutrition, can only be given via central venous line, CVC or PIG line. PIG line stands for peripherally inserted central catheter. A central venous catheter or CVC poses an infection risk as the CVC needs to be changed every seven days for infection control reasons. Assessment for TPN or total parental nutrition should include an assessment of individual nutritional risks and requirements, including the risk of 
refeeding syndrome. Given that patients in intensive care or critical care can lose weight rapidly, adequate nutritional support needs to be administered as soon as practically possible. It's better to ask early in your loved one's ICU admission how the intensive care team will be managing the nutritional part. Whilst your critically ill loved one is receiving TPN, regular checks of blood glucose levels should take place, as well as regular blood checks and electrolyte checks such as sodium, potassium, phosphate, magnesium and calcium levels. The advantages of TPN includes easy access and accurate and speedy delivery whenever a central venous catheter or CVC is present. Disadvantages are things like infection risk and potentially cost, as TPN can cost up to $500 to $600 per day. Historically speaking, enteral feeds such as PEG and nasogastric feeds as first-line nutrition management for critically ill patients are relatively new. Therefore, intravenous nutrition in the early days of critical care intensive care was how patients were fed. This kept the stomach empty, which came with its own set of problems and complications, such as increased acid production due to the stomach flora, including the stomach pH being out of balance and getting more acidity. This imbalance of the pH has often led to gastrointestinal bleeding, i.e. GI bleed, also known as a stomach bleed. Therefore, the shift has been to move from IV nutrition to enteral feeds, such as nasogastric feeds or PEC feeds, to in essence normalize gut flora and not have an empty stomach, and therefore also re reduce the risk of a GI or a stomach bleed, and also reduce the risk of ulcers. Therefore, since the shift from TPN to a more naturalized version of nutritional management in ICU, such as the nasogastric and the PEC feeds, the risk of GI bleeds has also been reduced significantly. Therefore, survival rates have increased, which is certainly a good thing. Furthermore, stress levels in intensive care for critically ill patients are very high. Therefore, the stomach naturally is producing more acid, again bringing the pH level out of balance and making a stomach bleed more likely because of the development of stomach ulcers. Again, enteral feeding is minimizing the, this risk and is reducing acid production in the stomach, keeping the pH more neutral and in balance. To summarize quickly, enteral feeds such as nasogastric or PEC feeds for ventilated and sedated patients in, in, in induced coma should always be priority. Oral intake for awake patients is also a preference. For any complications, as I mentioned above, TPN should be considered. If your loved one needs TPN at home, have a look at the link that I put below this video in the written version of this blog, TPN Administration and Peak Line or Central Line Care in the Community. And if you are watching this on YouTube, click on the link below this video and it'll get you to our website where you can access all of the resources, including the link to home TPN. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, how can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider 
and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I will see you again next week in another update. Make sure you have a look at our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find the international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, have a look at our membership site, intensivecaresupport.org, where we create a membership for families in intensive care and where you find like-minded people helping you with your challenges, including myself. Also, have a look at our ebook section you get more ebooks, videos, and audios, and you can also get one on one consulting and advocacy with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, and I'll see you again next week in another update.